Hey, this is Thad Smith again, executive chef at Sterno Products, America's leading provider of portable warming and ambient solutions for the food service industry. Welcome to our third edition of our podcast series, Getting Your Express Catering Operation Up and Running. Uh, in our first episode, we met Director of Operations for Salvation Pizza in Austin and chatted with him about his decision to get into express catering. It was a great conversation. In our second, uh, we talked to George again, as we will be talking to George through uh, all of uh, these these podcasts on express catering. We talked about the uh, preliminary steps and doing the homework of getting an operation up and going, and uh, that was another great conversation. You can listen to those at sternopro.com forward slash training center. The topic, of course, is express catering, and I hate to be redundant, but it's always good to remind us what we're talking about. Express catering is a service extension of an established restaurant or caterer that is designed to work in concert with day-to-day operations. Express catering provides customers with the opportunity to host an event, business lunch, family gathering, holiday party, and enjoy the same great food and experience of their favorite restaurant at their home, place of business, or in a setting of their choice. Many people know express catering as drop-off catering. We think express catering is a better term. It's more encompassing. As I mentioned, we're here with the great George Taranzo, Director of Operations of Salvation Pizza in Austin. We've been working with him, uh, helping him and his staff put together an express catering program for their operation. Uh, they have been part of a case study that we're doing and is part of a larger express, express catering educational program, which again can be found at ex, uh, sternopro.com forward slash training center. Uh, at the training center, you'll find a complete toolbox to help you with your express catering program, including the Sterno Express Catering 5-Step Startup Guide, uh, video series, cost calculators, safety info and posters, as well as this terrific podcast series. Today's podcast is to- topic is menu and pricing. Um, you know your customer, that's for sure, um, and you know your brand. You know your customer's favorite dishes and your staff's capabilities. We'd like you to stay true to your core and be open to expanding your menu to meet the needs of new customers. Think business lunches, university events, church gatherings, holiday parties. George, uh, let's talk a little bit about the way you, as an established restaurant, went about determining, you know, how you would develop this express catering menu. Tell me, take us through the, that process. Um, first and foremost, we tried to look at what was going to be uh, feasible to execute uh, in mass quantities uh, and try to kind of take out the, 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 the items that were a little bit too complex or that also needed to have a certain look to it. Um, so we kind of made the, our menu uh based off of our regular menu, but also in order to be able to execute uh, in a quicker scale and also not to uh, not to slow down the regular operations of the restaurant. So, and I know we talked a little bit about this in the earlier episodes, you are really, this This is not a separate menu. You may, you have a few things that are additional, which I want to talk about in a second, but for the most part, what you're talking about is staying true to that original Salvation branded menu. That is correct. I think that the most new items we brought in was three items to the whole menu. So yes, it's uh, 95, 97% uh, of the menu that we uh, currently uh, have on our on our uh, daily operations menu. Okay. So tell me a little bit about those additional items and why, and, and once you answer that, we'll talk about why you chose those. Sure. Recently we did add to our menu pastas, uh, which at the time we only offered uh, chicken uh, as a as a meat for it, uh, we did want to expand to that. Um, we wanted to add some other options to give a little bit more um, uh, substance to the to the pastas. So we did go ahead and uh, we're testing anyways the shrimps, which uh, we added a whole uh, jumbo shrimp. Uh, we're gonna blacken them or give them the option just to grill. Okay. Uh, we also added a tenderloin, and then we added a white fish, which uh, typically I like to stay with um, a mahi mahi if possible, if the season uh, allows it here in Austin. The uh, as far as customizing, if you if you have a customer that wants to customize, say a pasta, they want a special protein that you don't actually advertise or publish in your menu. Are you willing to do that? Are you trying to stay? This is what we do. There are no substitutions. Yeah, we're trying to stay to what we have. Uh, the, anytime you add that extra detail, it just requires a lot more. Um, uh, 
area for failure, if you will. We won't be ready for it. We're not set up for it. And so we want to try to keep it as simple to the menu. This is what we offer. And that's the reason we did expand a little bit to the menu outside of what we serve. The shrimp, the tenderloin, and the fish, we do not offer on a daily menu. Uh, so these are items strictly just for the express catering. So you're, you, you are stocking uh, those proteins until you get an order, or are you, are you special ordering them from a purveyor? Uh, we're gonna we're gonna to start. We're gonna a special order. I do have a 24 hour turnaround time on them. Okay. Uh, so I'm doing that. But obviously, as we as we hope to grow the business, uh, we feel like we should be able to get to a position where we are able to stock it and go through it uh, in a reasonable amount of time. That's very smart. So you're requiring the customer if they want. So does a customer have to have a 24 hour notice on their express catering order, or is it only if they're ordering those proteins that you've designated as as uh, you know, need advanced time to order them. Correct. Uh, yeah. So we can do the express catering on a, on a, uh, everything else on a normal, uh, morning order. Okay. But if the, it, on our menu, it does say, if you would like the shrimp, the tenderloin or the fish that we would need 24 hours advance notice. And you're getting you're so that what's great about that is your purveyor is probably getting it to you fresh. It's not frozen. Is that true? Absolutely. And that's part of the key that we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want to have a frozen, item sitting around uh, to, you know, it goes against everything that we're trying to do as far as our menu uh, sure. already. And of course, then you have to slack it out and there's all the, all the things that go with that as well. Um, sure. So as far as your purveyor, tell me a little bit about this. Uh, is, is this, this obviously is a, is a local um, butcher that you're working with? We do. We have a, uh, it's called Texas Meat Purveyor. And we also do uh, stuff through our, you know, our normal Cisco rep. They do offer uh, some fresh items there as well. Uh, but we are using a secondary purveyor uh, for several reasons. Number one, to have a backup. Uh, and number two, also because it is a, a fresher product that comes in on a daily basis, whereas my uh, uh, my normal purveyor uh, only delivers twice a week to me. I, I have a uh, six days delivery off of the new purveyor. And we did that, obviously, as a precautionary uh, tool for ourselves so we don't we don't find ourselves not being able to provide that uh, item to a customer. Always good to have a backup, that's for sure, especially in this business. Um, so let's talk about the menu a little bit. I, so the look of the menu, the, the menu that folks see online, uh, does it look a lot different than your regular menu? Absolutely. It was totally created uh, with a different view, different feel to it. Um, when you're looking at the menu, you obviously know it's meant for uh, festive occasions, parties, business lunches, things like that. It, it is uh, a whole different look and feel. Uh, to it than our original menu, yes. The, during this process, of course, you mentioned a, a, a lot of the menu items are, are inspired by your regular menu. Are there, are there certain things that you just don't put on the menu or you took off for express catering, things that just don't lend themselves to this kind of service? Uh, yes, things that, you know, things that we can't uh, control. If, if a certain dish, I'll, I'll give you an example, like bruschetta's, you know, I, it, it, it doesn't transport well. It doesn't look well. The moving parts of it uh, makes it look sloppy. Okay. So things like that we were kind of conscious of. You know, we want the, the presentation to be as fresh as the ingredients and also, at, you know, as good as the, as, the, as the item will be to eat. Right. How about fried items? Are you doing anything with that? I know that we had, early on in our conversation we talked about probably better not to go with fried items because they tend to get soggy. Is that still the case? Yes, outside of uh, we do offer chicken wings. It's kind of a, out, out there for us, but we do offer chicken wings. Outside of chicken wings, we'd stay away. We do a very nice in-house. Uh, uh, we we cut our own cheese. We make our own breadcrumbs for a uh, for a mozzarella stick, but we do not serve that as a to go. We don't even recommend it as a to go item in general when someone calls it in. Yeah, that's true. Breading can really get soggy. Nice thing about the, the chicken wings, of course, is the skin has so much fat and they crisp up really nice and, and are terrific for express catering. So I think breaded items is probably something you really want to avoid. Um, as far as uh, you mentioned, the you said mahi-mahi is the fish that you're going with? It is. It is. As long as it isn't seasoned for the most of the time. But they do have other options. I prefer it. I think it holds the best. Uh, it also... Uh, 
uh, you know, for as far as temperature wise, when you're transporting the fish, or you want a thicker fish, I think to be able to hold temperature better. So delicate and delicate fish would tend to fall apart as a fillet uh, in Correct. transport. So let's in talk. My, about, in my opinion, yeah, no, that's a it's it's a very valid opinion. I think you're absolutely right. So let's talk a little bit about how you're transporting the food. Uh, how are you getting it from the shop to the event? I mean, and I don't mean what's the transportation mode. I mean, what does the packaging look like with that with this? Yeah, so we're basically kind of uh, double sealing it uh, in our, in the pans. Obviously, we have the express catering kit that we're that we're taking it. What is uh, that? We're tell, making tell sure. Us, I know, I know what that is. Tell us a little bit about what the express catering startup kit is that you're using. What what are, what's in that product? Yeah, so it gives you a pretty much everything that a customer is going to need outside of uh, the serving. I mean, the the eating utensils. Uh, so it has you know the basic water pan in a wire rack format that is. Uh, uh, throw away at the end of the uh, of the event. Uh, you also get the inside pans where you actually are going to put all the fish or your or your, any items that you're cooking onto. You can seal that uh, to hold the temperature better. Uh, you know, you also get the uh, the two sternos, which we're using the two hour uh, green wick uh, sterno. Uh, okay. uh, to, to once we get it there, bring hot water um, so that when we started cooking or we start uh, setting it up. It still holds the temperature over 140. We'd like to ideally keep it over 150 if we can hold on to it. So you're the the serving temperature that, or the the temperature that so you you transport in these pans and it goes into some kind of transporter. Yes, we have several. We have uh, soft skin transporters, and for larger items, we did purchase some uh, 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 rougher trans- containers. Right. Yeah. The food transporters. Uh, those are, yeah, food those are and so you preheat those, and then you put the food in there, and then off you go. So the Correct. temperature, the temperature that you want the food to be at, the hot food you want the food to be at when it gets to the event is what? Uh, definitely over one hundred and forty. We're shooting for one hundred and fifty. Okay. Uh, that that also helps us determine how far we're gonna willing to deliver as well. To be clear, I just want to. I, of course, you and I know the answer to this, but for our audience. You are never transporting cold food to an event and heating it up in a chafing dish. You are no. sending it out hot, and when it gets into the chafing dish with the hot water and the, the fuel and everything else, it, it is already at temperature. So there's, the, you are not you are not heating to temp uh, on site. We just just as a reminder, we've developed a lot of tools. Uh, that really complement what we're talking about right here as far as training videos goes. We, we have something on prepping your transporter, setting up your chafing dish for hot and cold service, not only hot, but cold service. You can even set it up, set it up as, a, um, uh, as a kind of a drink server as well. So um, we, we don't have much time left and we're gonna talk about equipment and things tomorrow. And we'll also talk about that third party um, service that you have that are delivering your events. Tell us how you determine what your pricing is going to be on your menu items for your express catering operation. Uh, we use a, a, a company called Compete here in Austin, Texas, that's actually local. Uh, so we use them as far as all of our pricing is concerned. We enter every item and it kind of breaks it down for us. But we, we stick to the, to the basic formula of, especially with this new product catering, we want to get the word out and we just want to get this product out. Um, so I didn't go crazy on overpricing ourselves. Uh, we basically broke down the items to uh, a a half pan, okay. um, you know, and then uh, see what our cost was. And we went times three on it. Pretty basic. I did add a little bit of cost to each item to um, reflect the cost of the of the transportation cost and also the uh, the wire rack system. But I didn't go over overboard just because I really what I'm looking to do is to for this to be an accent to my regular lunch delivery uh, Monday through Friday, and then anything else off of that would be a bonus. Understood. So to re- recap that, you take your your food and your packaging costs and multiply it by three, add a, a few more points on for transportation, and that's where you get uh, to pricing to your customers. Just so you know, we've got a bunch of ca- cost calculators on the training center at sternopro.com that George helped us uh, develop. Um, they give you the formulas that you need to get to the right price. I'm gonna, we're gonna stop here. But I, I, there's one question that people have been asking me: Where did the name Salvation Pizza, your operation, come from? Uh, my, one of my owners is actually from the New England area, and uh, a long time ago, when he was working out in the in the East Coast, he saw the place, believe it or not, and he really enjoyed um, the pizza, and he also enjoyed the name. 
of it. And he found out that the place had gone out of business. Uh, and when, and he had just basically said to himself and noticed that if he ever opens up his pizza shops here in Austin, he was going to name it that name. And it, it got it from that. It's actually a very uh, New Haven uh, name that came uh, out of New Haven, which is obviously our concept is New Haven, Neapolitan style pizza. That's great. Salvation Pizza. And it's SalvationPizza.com, correct? Correct. SalvationPizza.com. George, thanks uh, so much for another great conversation. The next time uh, George and I talk, we'll be talking about products and equipment uh, and about the third party he's using to deliver his express catering orders to his customers. Uh, great talking with you. Thanks so much, George. Thank you. Okay, we'll be back next time with episode four. Again, that's products and equipment. Be sure to follow Sterno Products on Facebook and Twitter, hashtag Express Catering. We're at sternopro.com. Until next time, keep cooking. Thanks. Thanks.